Hey guys, this is Victoria, and today I'm going to be doing a review on the Touchable Ableton app. It is available for iOS devices, so your iPad, iTouch, iPhone. Unfortunately, I did not see it available for Android or Windows devices, so hopefully that'll be something that they upgrade in the future, um, because it's a very, very good, useful app, and I think everybody should get to take advantage of it. The price tag on it is $25 for the iPad version and for the iTouch iPhone version it's $9.99 so $10. It is not a cheap app but it's not expensive and it's much cheaper than um, going out and buying a controller. It's so useful you can control the volume, panning, you can add plugins, it has a little piano roll. I mean, these are all things I'm going to be going over later, but it's a really good solution if you're looking for a wireless controller. And um, it can also be wired. You plug in a USB cable to your computer and there you go. That's really useful because it does connect over Wi-Fi. So in some situations, like at a gig or something like that, where they may not have Wi-Fi available for you and you don't carry around your own personal modem, you can still use the app by just plugging it in. And I feel like you know, cable is much more dependable than wireless anyways, but I myself use it wirelessly and it works. It works good. I did initially have a couple of issues making it consistently connect, but I think I figured out the problem and I haven't had that issue. So I'll discuss it um, when I'm going over the settings. And I think that's about it. Why don't we go on ahead and get the review started? Here is Touchable. This is exactly how it should open every time. Um, it shows the computers that you have set up with it. I got my MacBook Pro and my Mac Mini. Um, right now we're going to be just using the MacBook Pro. Um, it is connected Wi-Fi right now and it's working like it should. Thank God. <laughs> So here we have our track. So you can see the far left um, audio track is kind of bouncing in there. It's actually doing live recording, but we're not using that recording. So I'm over, I'm overdubbing everything over here. So I want to go on ahead and just kind of scroll over, but it is cool that you can see the visual feedback that was all done live. Moving over to tracks that we are using, which I got this um, set from the actual just Ableton software. It's one of the practice sessions. I just wanted to do something for demonstration purposes that was easy. So that's that's that. None of this music is mine. And we have our transport control, play, stop, record, your very basic functions. Very important. That record there is for arrangement view. You can turn on the metronome right there. And next to it you have a button that will control the volume for the metronome. So it works really nicely, it responds great. There's also this little like play button with a circle, that's the quantization menu. And next to that, we have the undo and redo buttons, which are very, very much used by myself always. Here you can see what measure we're on. We are recording all of this live, so that's why we're on 47-ish. And you can also change the tempo from there. Here we have some automation tools, adding, re-enabling, all of that. And here is the session record. So while you're in session view, that's what you'll use to record just new clips. This new button will prepare scenes for new recording. And this button will actually give you access to your audio effects, MIDI effects, plugins, like everything that is on the left portion of Ableton. You can access your plugins, which I was very excited to see that it captured all of them. There's a list of all my plugins in there. And um, we'll go back to that a little bit later, but we are going to talk real quick about these two buttons, um, the create and delete. You can create tracks, delete tracks, create scenes, delete scenes, you know, pretty much everything, creating and deleting. And the settings button, which is settings. Also in the settings area, you have your manual, so handy stuff. We're gonna just demo how the clips work. You can see how there's a monitoring of the volume. It's giving good visual feedback. Play. 
put another one. <laughs> All right, I stopped that because I did just bad timing there. We'll try that again. So there is not really a lag time at all. Everything responds right away when I push it. And you can see within the clips how long each clip is supposed to be in relation to each other. But I'm just gonna stop all of these so I can talk about it a bit more. So you can really control pretty much every parameter within Ableton on here. Um, it's a control service and it really covers all the bases. Here you can have access to soloing and arming and you can even go to your monitoring, which I know you can't see the lettering right there. I'm not good at iPad recording apparently. But you can also um, disable the track slash mute. Kind of same difference. I like that you can see the name of the track and it actually even matches the color pretty closely to what it is. Anyways, panning left and right right there and um, volume <laughs> up and down right there. And you can also see the master volume right there. So pretty neat. You can even display multiple parameter controls. Look at that volume and panning, volume panning and um, arming, soloing. So it's a bit much, but hey, if you want all of those at the same time, you do you. I'm gonna keep volume there though. This button here is pretty powerful, the select button. So I'm gonna click on this drum clip and you can see a piano roll, but I can fold it to where you can only see the um, notes that are being used. You can click them out and I'll demonstrate undo here and stick it right back in there. And whenever you're done doing what you need to do, you just push the button and you're right back where you started. Now you don't have to look at it like this. If you want your meters to be on top or you know you only want to have meters or only clips, which this view is, there's not very many clips though in this session, but you have the option. If we had more tracks, that would fill up with more tracks. This is like a effects sort of window. So you see you don't have much um, going on really in there. It's just the ones that came automatically with that set. I apologize for clicking around everywhere. I get lost with all these buttons. But here we have our standard audio effects and you just drag it over to the track you want. And um, I'm pretty sure I did something wrong because it like duplicated the effects on the other track but we are gonna just roll with it for right now because I did not feel like re-recording everything. So there's auto filter. It displays beautifully. It looks just like the effect in Ableton. They did a really really good job with it. We're gonna just start some sound. Okay so I am on the wrong track as you can see I'm on warm EP and not the drums. So I'm just switching on over to the correct track. And it also does help to turn it on. So as we saw earlier, um, for whatever reason, it duplicated the effects and now it's linking them. I'm not afraid to say, I have no idea why, but when I find out, I will let y'all know. And if somebody out there knows why, um, please tell us why. Um, I'm learning some of these features kind of as I go. I used to just use it for like stop, record and play, but it can do so much more and it's a lot of fun learning it. Okay, so we're coming over to this create area. You got MIDI, audio, duplicate right there. I just made a MIDI track. I know I did it really quick and I'm sorry. Again, it's not really a tutorial. It's just kind of showing off some features here, but there's my MIDI track. Um, and I'm gonna go just back to the record arm solo menu area. And I'm going to add a plugin. And I personally like Lounge Lizard, um, so I'm searching for it. And just like the other effect, you click and drag. And I know that this did not duplicate or do anything too crazy, but you can see that Lounge Lizard has been added. 
And I chose it specifically to be able to demo this next sort of function. Lounge Lizard is just like a, a keyboard type of instrument, so easy to play individual notes and scales. So I'm going to not deactivate it. I meant to arm it. There we go. We're coming over to this kind of keyboard pad area, and if you just give me one second while I make this look right, <laughs> I'm trying to make it work with this iPad recording, guys. It's harder than I thought it would be. So you can see a kind of push-like thing going on here. Good old-fashioned C major scale. You got Lydian going on here. You've got so many different scales that you can choose from, so you don't have to be like a theory major to make some interesting scales happen. Which I know is kind of cheating, but hey, if you're making great music, why not? This is your standard keyboard layout. If I can not move my iPad. And here we have kind of bigger looking pad so not practical for what we're using it for but if you have a drum machine plug-in then that's perfect we're gonna jump on down to the x y axis i'm not gonna be demoing it because it was a little complicated and um i couldn't find a mappable parameter it just wasn't working for me or it's probably user error we'll be honest and this user just wasn't quite figuring it out and didn't want to get too involved in it. So clearly this app can do a lot. I just kind of went over the things that I felt like people were going to use more often than not. It's pretty simple to figure out. I didn't have to whip out the manual or anything and I was able to kind of manage. Thank you guys so much for watching. That's all I have for you today for the Touchable app. It's a great, great solution if you are needing something that's wireless um, to control Ableton or again, wired, you can go either way. And it's affordable, which is such a big plus. Um, you can give it a try. And if you don't like it, it's not tragic. It's not like you went and bought, you know, $600 controller and now you're a little sad about having it. So give it a try. Um, it's, it's definitely worth it it can do a lot as you can see and that's about all i have for you but thank you so much for watching if you like gear talk and videos about music gear um you can go on ahead and subscribe to my channel i do them as often as i can get my hands on gear and um give it a thumbs up if you like this video thank you so much and until next time